Good morning and welcome back to another episode. We just anchored up for a new anchorage mm -hmm. called Pigeon K. Yep. We drive in Elena. It's gonna be a nice day. Today we're gonna do a little bit of a challenge. We are. It is a primitive spearfishing challenge. So it's pretty back to basics. What we're gonna do is we've got a sharp object. We've got a bit of rubber. Put them together. You've got a pole spear. And we're gonna go and do a bit of a challenge to see with just that if we can spear anything for lunch. So no fins. No, no weights. It. No weights. No anything else, eh? No, no snorkel. Just a mask. Just back to basics. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Primitive spearfishing style. Let's <laughs> go. Cool. All right, let's get into it. Head out behind this rock here. We're hoping that there'll be a couple of bigger coral heads where we're going to start hunting. And um, the water looks beautiful and clear, so fingers crossed the viz is nice and, and the fish are plentiful. Didn't you get the back to basics memo, Riley, today, mate? You, <laughs> you look like a superhero. <laughs> After I bought this, mate, I'm, I'm uh, fairly hesitant to take it off. Even at bedtime. Pretty happy with my Yamamoto. <laughs> Ready to jump in? Get rid of all this nonsense. We're going back to basics. Oh, that was a whole heap of fun. So we did manage to get one um, lobster there and we were very close to getting a really nice size Nassau groper, but much to, to Riley's request, we um, chose not to pull the spear on them. And what's the reasoning behind that, Riley? So they're protected, or they're an endangered species as close as Florida. They're not endangered here. And because you're not wearing fins, I was like, oh, maybe, but re really, um, marine biologists have reached out to me on, on my channel in my comment section and said, hey, you know, don't do that, set the right example. So that's, yeah. that's, that's been the rule on the Vagabond ever since. But it is quite cool to get down there and know that you could have got it. Yeah. Like you got so close to that one, hey? Yeah. I thought yeah. you were gonna kiss it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan now is we're gonna move to another area and see if we can get a fish for, um, for dinner as well. How'd you find it, friend? Oh, so much fun. It's quite challenging. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It actually takes way more of your oxygen to dive down without fins. Yeah. Spare yeah. thought for the cinematographer. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> busting my ass over here trying to get the shots. Right. Thumbs up if anyone thinks that any of those shots are pretty good. <laughs> well, he's definitely the hero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, onwards and upwards.
Yeah, that was amazing. Doing, this is him here, that's a, a nice size to be cooked up on the fire. There was just like a, a bit of a coral head and it had a cave and these guys, these snappers, really love hanging out under those undercut ledges. So I went down and um, he was the biggest one. He sort of spooked as I went under the ledge and I managed to get a shot but then had to swim through this bit of an undercut to, to get him out the other side. But pretty happy with that. <laughs> it's a good size. Yeah, it's a nice size one, isn't it? Good yeah. eating size for us. Perfect. Look, Lenny. Look, Lenny. <laughs> oh. The water is so clear here. So this is a, a big coral head behind us that Riley and Elena are just having a bit of a swim on. You can pretty much see everything from the surface here and that's like maybe 12, 13 meters deep. It's just incredible. Doesn't get any better. So nice, yeah, eh? Yeah, this perfect weather. Couldn't ask for anything better than this. It's unbelievable, guys. It's so rare to get the, the conditions like this where it's so calm. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna head out to some deeper water and um, do some deeper water spear fishing. So I've, I've thrown a wetsuit on. We're gonna actually put some fins on now and head out where we are anchored. There's a couple other boats there. So if we have a bit of luck, we'll um, bring some of that fish back to, to feed the rest of the anchorage. Oh, oh man, awesome, that was good fun. Oh, these boys are like little kids, hey? They're so excited right now. Sean! Oh, that's a nice size. It's a nice eating size, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. Awesome. That was really good teamwork, so we, we sort of had three dives on him. I spotted him the first time, but um, fired a bit of a warning shot. <laughs> and then Riley got a, a good shot, and that's actually where he hit, but the, um, the Grover just sort of like head-butted the spear off and swam away, and then third time, third time lucky. Yeah, that's gonna be yum. You guys got us smarted by the mutton? Got smarted by the mutton. Sounds like it. Yeah, but we um we ended up with a black roper, so we're happy. <laughs> They're pretty cunning, the old mutton. <laughs>
this one is the ceviche. And do you reckon that's good on a cracker frame? Yeah. It's a pretty angry looking storm cloud approaching. You think we're going to get some rain, Elena? Oh yeah, bring it in the one thing now. You me. We've got a pretty angry looking squall approaching behind us here and it is very eerie. The ocean has just gone flat, calm and still. And you can actually smell the rain in the air. Look at this. Feel that. It gives me goosebumps remembering the times when this has happened on the open ocean. Yeah. When I, when I see that coming, I'm like, oh. You can feel it, can't you? Yeah. You feel it, and like you said, you can smell it, you feel it. Yep, yep. And this thing that's coming now, depending on what it does, it'll, it could push us like onto the rocks or this way. Or... It's coming. I reckon it's only a minute off us, Riley. We're going to pop a bit of rain here, mate. Just got a, a bit of a minefield of coral heads and reefs as we're coming out of this shallow section and um, you lose kind of all visibility when the clouds come over so it's really important at the moment riley's got one of us up the front here just keeping a bit of a lookout and uh, we're, we're heading straight out towards that rainbow which is pretty cool surely that's a good omen of sorts but one of the misleading things is that the water is so clear as you can see down here you feel like you're about to run aground but you know, that might be seven meters deep still. We're gonna get a double rainbow. How cool's that? That's why I got you to loosen off more and more and more because if you look at the arrow at the top, yeah. that's where the apparent wind is coming from. See that arrow? That's that's pointing, that's what the boat is feeling in terms of wind. That's where the yeah. wind is coming from. Yeah. So you trim your sail according to that arrow. Yeah. There's also electronics that will tell us that as well. But yeah. if you just want to quickly look, the wind is coming from there. All right, it's going up a little Could they do it? <laughs> <laughs> so much pressure. Back around. Oh, up. Cool. Right. Good job. We got there eventually. We're going to have to practice a few knots before we buy a cat of bread. <laughs> what was your take on the first spinnaker launch, friend? Definitely need some practice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing bowline practice before bed, won't we? <laughs> but beautiful conditions here. Not really for sailing, but for being on the water, it's calm. The water's clear. It's pretty nice, really, isn't it? Yeah, I'm a little bit sweaty. It's yeah. It was got a bit hot and flustered with all that going on. <laughs> We just took the dinghy to the beach. We're gonna get the fire going and have a little bit of a cookout, eh? Exactly, sounds awesome. We've probably got maybe 40 minutes of sunlight left. <laughs> so um, sort of just enough time to get the fire started. And how did you calculate the 40 minutes? Four fingers worth, <laughs> 10 minutes a finger. <laughs> and yeah, it's about 40 minutes. Cool. You know that trick? Yeah, I know that trick. Yeah. But and four of mine, my, it's five of my fingers and four of yours. <laughs> so I reckon it's 15 minutes. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, all right. All right, let's, let's get some firewood. Oh, yes. This is great kindling to get a fire started. Fran's just yelling at me down the beach to come quick and bring a camera. I wonder what it is. What is it? It's one of the, the 
it's one of these big rocky granites there with a like red throne. Oh. Scared of the little one. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is so cool. So he's um Oh look at this. Oh my god, look at this, look at this. There's a couple of different species of reptiles around us here at the moment that we've just never seen before. The most impressive is this big iguana behind us here. And he's a bright orange color through his face and his body. There's another one here which has kind of got a green tint to his skin. And this is the, one of the reasons Fran and I love traveling because we come to places like this and see these types of animals we've just never seen before and in their natural environment. You know, here they are just living out in the wild, living their best life. Of course, being reptiles, they've come down to sun themselves on the rocks here in the afternoon and lap up the last of that heat and energy in the sun. All right, now we need to get a fire started before it gets dark. So we're gonna sneak past these guys, get a, a little bit more firewood, and then um, should be time to kick that fire off. Gonna be our one tray. Perfectly cooked with all seafood, especially these crayfish. You can go like medium rare. That looks absolutely perfect. Let that cool down and we'll get into it. What's happened, friend? I can do it. This one is my thing. <laughs> yeah, you give, you give it a big push. What a beautiful afternoon on the beach, eh? That was just absolutely magic. 